Thanks for joining us. My name is Miss Rachel. I'm a teacher support specialist here at Albuquerque Public Schools. I've got a story to read for you today, as well as a vocabulary activity and a sequencing event activity. Now, the book I have for you here today is called The Night Gardener. It's written by the Fan Brothers and it's published by Simon and Schuster. Looking at this story, what do you think it's going to be about? I noticed that there's a tree that doesn't really look like a tree. It looks like an owl. And I notice a boy looking up at the tree in wonder. It makes me think that this movie or this story might be fiction, that it's not real. But I'm wondering how the tree ended up looking like an owl. I can tell that the title has the word gardener. So I wonder if somebody grew a tree that looked like an owl? I'm not sure. Let's read and find out. Now, one of the reasons I really love this book is the author leaves a lot of things up to your imagination. This is a great story to practice asking questions as you read. Before the story even begins, I'm really interested in the artwork here. I don't notice any colors on this page, which is unique for a story. And I notice that there's people, but their heads are down and they're not acknowledging each other. Again, I notice there's not much color on this page, but I see a man appearing on both pictures. He has on a hat and he has a ladder. I wonder if he might be the gardener in this story. And there again, I see the same man with his hat and his ladder trimming a tree. I wonder what he's doing. William looked out his window to find a commotion on the street. He quickly dressed, ran downstairs, and raced out the door to discover the wise owl had appeared overnight as if by magic. William spent the whole day staring at it in wonder. Hmm. Now, I notice the tree here again is the same tree as the cover. It looks like an owl. I also noticed that that's the only thing in color on this page. That's an interesting choice. And he continued to stare at it until it became too dark to see. That night, he went to sleep with a sense of excitement. There's the man with the ladder again. The following morning, William was not disappointed. This tree looks like a cat. Again, I notice a difference in color from when the first tree was there. Each day, William discovered a new topiary. Next was a friendly ant rabbit, followed by a pretty parakeet. And then a playful elephant. With each new sculpture, the crowds grew and grew. Something was happening on Grimlock Lane, something good. Now in this picture, I notice a change too. I see again that there's more color, but I also notice that somebody has a balloon, there's somebody with a tuba, and somebody's taking a photograph of the tree. The next day, William dashed out of his home and followed the crowds only to find the most magnificent masterpiece yet. Wow, it's a dragon and it uses two trees connected together. 
Again, this looks so different than one of our first pages where there was no color. Now, I see the people looking up and playing and talking to each other. Why do you think that changed? Festivities continued long after the sun had set. As William was about to head home, he spotted someone unfamiliar. I see the ladder again. Do you think it might be the gardener? Could it be? The gentleman turned to William. There are so many trees in this park. I could use a little help. It was the night gardener. There's the man with his hat. Under the light of a full moon, they work deep into the night. William awoke to the sound of happy families walking by and a gift from the night gardener. The whole town had come out to admire the night gardeners and William's hard work. Wow, look how colorful this page is. I see that there's kids playing with kites and playing ball and there's more balloons than even before. I think these trees have really brought this community together. Over time, the leaves changed and then fell until there was no evidence that the night gardener had ever been to Grimlock Lane. But the people of the small town were never the same. And neither was William. I notice now that he's cutting the trees. So I'm wondering, who do you think the night gardener was? Why did he go to Grimlock Lane? Those are questions that the author doesn't answer for us in the story, but you can use your imagination to fill in the gaps. Now, we're gonna play a little vocabulary game I like to call Scramble. I've chosen some words from the night gardener and written their definitions. I've already made the game so I can show you how to play. Here, I have the definitions of the words but the letters got all scrambled up when I tried to write the word. Do you think you could help me unscramble them? Great. Let's think about the first definition. Someone or something that has a lot of knowledge or information. Hmm. Somebody who has a lot of knowledge might be somebody who's wise. Let's see if we can make the word wise with these letters. W, W. I like to cross off the letters as I go along so I don't accidentally reuse something. I, S, E. Wise. Someone or something that has a lot of knowledge or information. Great job. Let's try the next one. To move quickly or rush. Hmm. I'm thinking about the story. I might go back and check. I remember that William moved quickly. And I think it said that he dashed out of his home. Yes. So I wonder if this word is the word dash. There's a D. Let's try. D. A. S. H. Dash. That means to move quickly or rush. Hmm, this is a really long word. It says, lots of movement 
and disruption. Hmm. I'm thinking again back to the story. And on the very first page, it says, William looked out his window to find a commotion on the street. I wonder if this could be the word commotion. Let's try it. I see a C. O. M. M. Another O. T. I. O. N. Commotion. That means lots of movement and disruption. The next uh, word, the definition is a person who takes care of plants or vegetables. Hmm. I know that plants and vegetables belong in a garden, so the person who takes care of those would be a gardener just like the title of our story, The Night Gardener. G A R D E N. So that's the word garden. Now to make it gardener, I'll add the E R onto the end. Great job. Two more to go. The next definition says a day or time of celebration. When I think back to my story, I remember that after the night gardener made the dragon, the people were out celebrating. The next page said festivities continued long after the sun had set. So maybe this is the word festival. That's a day or time of celebration. F E S T I V A L. Festival. Great. Let's finish this last one. The definition says a large number of people gathered closely. Hmm. I know that when there's a lot of people around, I've heard people say the word crowd, a crowd of people. That means a lot of people. Let's figure out the word crowd. C R O, W, D, crowd, great job. Now think about how you could play this game at home. All you need is a piece of paper and a pencil. You can define things in your house or you could describe people in your family and scramble up the letters to have a grown-up or another family member try to guess your words. Next, we're going to talk about sequencing. So if I were to retell somebody the story of the night gardener, I'd want to think about the most important events of the story. Sequencing means that we put those events in order. I've written some numbers up here to help us put the story events in order. That's called sequencing. We're also going to use signal words like first, next, then, after, and last. To help us sequence our story, I've printed some pictures from the story. So I need to think about the very first thing that happened. Hmm. I remember that William woke up and he saw a special tree outside of his window. So that should be my first event. 
I'm going to put the picture of the tree next to the number one. That was the first thing that happened in our story. What happened next? Yes, the night gardener continued to sculpt trees. So I have a picture of another tree with a bunny rabbit on it. That happened second. Do you remember what happened after that? Yes, the people started celebrating outside. I'm thinking about our vocabulary word festival. And they celebrated around the dragon tree. So I'm going to put that by the number three. After the festival, William saw the night gardener. So I found a picture of the night gardener and the special scissors that he gave to William. So I'm going to put both of those pictures by number four. And finally, at the end of the story, the author said that the town was never the same again, and neither was William. How do you think the town was different? I agree. There was people out and celebrating and talking to each other. So I'm going to put this picture here last to remember that nothing was the same again. Now, I'm going to practice retelling this story now that I've sequenced the events. Like I said, we want to make sure to use signal words. And I'm going to write them over here to help me as I retell the story. Words like first, next, then, after, and last. So listen as I retell my story. First, the night gardener sculpted an owl. Next, he made a new animal sculpture every day. Then, the community celebrated. They had a festival. After, the night gardener met William and asked him for some help. Last, the town was never the same again. So let's think about how you could do an activity like this at home. I'm thinking about earlier today when Miss Maggie and Miss Q talked about the story Red. They talked about what it meant to be unique and to be yourself. Your family and you have your own history and your own story that is unique and special to you. You can practice sequencing events by telling the story of your life or somebody else in your family. So we're going to make a timeline together. To do this activity at home, all you'll need is a piece of paper, a pencil, and maybe some photographs if you have them. If you don't, you could draw your own pictures too. Now, a timeline is telling the events of a story in order. So think about your life. What was the first event in your life? That's right, you were born. So you could ask a grown-up in your house if they have a photo of you when you were born or when you were a baby. If you don't have one, that's okay. You can draw it. To make my timeline, I'm going to draw a straight line across my paper. And I'm going to add the pictures that tell the story of my life. So you can do the same. Just like you, the first thing that happened to me was I was born. 
So I have a picture of a baby to show that that was the first event in my life. Then my parents had another baby. So I got a sibling. That was the second event in my life. So I'm going to add another line up here so that my events go in order. After that, I got in a bike accident. So I found a picture of somebody who crashed their bike. That was another big event in my life that I'd like to add to my timeline. And here's another line for me to add my next picture. After I crashed my bike, that was the summer before I started school. So my next photo is of my first day of school. That was another big important moment in my life. And after my first year of school, my family went on a road trip. So I found a photo to show our road trip. Now, notice I staggered my photos so that they could fit on one page, but my events still go in order. I might even add numbers to show the sequence of events. If you'd like to do a little more at home, you can write a sentence that goes along with each picture. You might also add the year that that event happened. That will help make sure your events are in order. So my first picture, I'm going to write a sentence. I was born. What could I write in the second picture? Yeah, I got a sibling. So I'm going to write, I got a sister. My next picture was about my bike crash. So I'm going to write a sentence that said, my bike crashed. Then I had my first day of school. I went to school. And the last picture in my timeline, I found a photo of my family's road trip. So I'm going to write, we went on a road trip. Now I've added details to my timeline and I sequenced the events from my life. Like I said, you can do the same at home to learn more about your family's history or even a little bit more about your own life. If you choose to do this activity at home, we'd love to see your work. You can take a picture or send an email of your work to aps.distancelearning at gmail.com or find us on Twitter with at home with APS. We'd love to learn about your families. Thank you for joining us today and look forward to your, the rest of your lessons today and I'll see you later this week. Thanks.
Hola, buenos días a todos. Hola otra vez. Me llamo Señora Torres. Gracias por pasar algunos minutitos conmigo otra vez. Bienvenidos otra vez a un episodio de At Home at APS. Me siento muy feliz pasar tiempo con ustedes. Y hoy tenemos un libro muy, pero muy especial acerca de la vida de una tortilla. Ustedes van a preguntarme, ¿las tortillas viven? Sí. ¿En este cuento? Sí. Y como siempre, tengo mi perrito Paz conmigo. Hola, Paz, ¿cómo estás hoy? Mi pasito. Es mi perrito peluche. ¿Cómo están ustedes? ¿Todo bien? Me alegre mucho, igual para mí. Bueno, vamos a comenzar. Hoy tengo, actualmente tengo dos libros, uno en español totalmente acerca de la vida de una tortilla. También tengo otro librito acerca de tortillas también y una familia. Qué suerte, ¿verdad? Vamos a tener dos libros acerca de mi comida favorita. Es las tortillas. Este libro o este cuento se llama La Tortilla Correadora. Mm, ¿Las tortillas corren? Normalmente que no, ¿verdad? El libro tiene un autor, Laura Herrera, y la ilustradora es Scarlett Narciso. ¡Qué suerte! Vamos a tener un tiempo muy divertido leyendo un libro. La tortilla corriadora. Había una vez una mujer, una mujer, que vivía en el campo a la sombra de un viejo alerce. Tenía una casa de tres pisos, uno, dos, tres, y siete hijos muy, pero muy hambrientes. Vamos a contar los hijos. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. ¡Ah! Uno está arriba en la ventana, ¿viste? Y la mamá. ¿Qué les parece? Yo veo una tortilla con ojos. ¿Normalmente las tortillas en tu casa tienen ojos? No en mi casa. Hmm. Y mira los ojos de los chicos. Viendo la tortilla como, ¡qué sorpresa! Hmm. Un día la mujer preparó una deliciosa tortilla que puso al rescoldo. Los siete hijos miraban la tortilla. La tortilla miraba a los siete hijos. Es muy irregular, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Qué va a pasar? Me parece como otro cuento de un hombre jengibre. Un gingerbread man. ¿Ustedes conocen este cuento también? Mm, qué interesante. Vamos a ver si es igual. Cuando la tortilla estuvo lista, la mujer la sacó de las brasas, la iba a sazuder con un paño, pero la tortilla saltó de sus manos y salió corriendo. ¿Las tortillas corren? Normalmente que no. Hmm. Estos siete niños me quieren comer, gritó la tortilla. ¿Es la verdad? Sí, es la verdad. Bueno, ahora la tortilla va a correr. No, no sé qué va a pasar. ¿Qué piensan ustedes? Van a predecir. Van a adivinar. We're going to guess. Y rodó cuesta abajo. Y mira todo de estos, de toda la familia están siguiendo a la tortilla. Ay, 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 ¿qué va a pasar? 
Por ahí estaba el gallo. ¿A dónde vas tan apurada? Le dijo. Bebes tan delicioso que te quiero comer. No, señor, dijo la tortilla. No me comieron los siete niños hambrientos y tampoco me comerás tú. Y siguió corriendo. ¿Las tortillas corren? Normalmente que no. Pero en este cuento, sí. Mira los ojos de la tortilla. Me parece muy, muy gracioso, ¿verdad? <risa> Más allá estaba la vaca. Hola, vaca. ¿A dónde vas tan apurada? Le dijo. Te ves tan tostadita que te quiero comer. No, señora, dijo la tortilla. No me comieron los siete niños hambrientos. No me comió el gallo. No me comerás tú. Y sigo corriendo. Yo escucho un patrón. ¿Sabes una cosa, niños y niñas? Que me parece que con cada personaje que entra en, el, en, la, en la cuenta que algo va a pasar y ellos van a tener un patrón. Vamos a ver. Y ahora, ¿quién está aquí con nosotros? Es la verdad del perrito. Luego estaba el perrito. ¿A dónde vas tan apurada? Le dijo. Hueles tan bien que te quiero comer. No, señor, dijo la tortilla. No me comieron los siete niños hambrientos. No me comió el gallo. No me comió la vaca. Y no me comerás tú. Y siguió corriendo. Ay, 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 mira, la tortilla se ve como descansada. Pobrecita. Oh, oh. Y ahora estamos bien cerquita de un río. Ay, ¿qué va a pasar? Pero más abajo estaba el río. ¿Y ahora qué haré? exclamó la tortilla. No puedo atravesar el río. Me puedo ahogar. Me puedo deshacer. Me puedo morir. ¿La tortilla va a morir? ¿Qué les parecen ustedes? <risa> Vamos a ver, yo veo. ¿Alguien aquí esperando? ¿Qué va a pasar? Por suerte, había un amigo cerquita para ayudar a la tortilla. Siempre me siento muy feliz y bendecida por tener amigos y amigas. ¿Ustedes igual? Yo también. El chancho le propuso, yo te puedo llevar al otro lado. Súbete a mi lomo, la tortilla correador, salto sobre el lomo del chancho. El chancho se metió al río, pero el agua salpicaba a la tortilla. Gotitas del agua están arriba de una tortilla. Oh, ¡Incaramante! Sobre mi nariz, le dijo el chancho. Así no te mojarás. Es una buena idea. Si la tortilla está cerca de la boca del chancho, ¿qué les parece? ¿Es una buena idea? Vamos a ver. La tortilla se encaramó a la nariz del chancho. El chancho respingó la nariz. La tortilla se tambaleó y el chancho abrió la boca grande, grande y... ¿Qué va a pasar? ¿Ustedes parecen que el chancho va a comer la tortilla? Yo también. Vamos a ver. ¡Ay! ¡Suerte, tortilla! Pero antes 
de que el chancho se la pudiera tragar, la tortilla dio un salto y se escapó. ¡Qué sorpresa! ¡Wow! Que la tortilla se escapó. ¡Wow! Por suerte, ¿verdad? La tortilla se salvó y este cuento se acabó. ¿Es el final? ¿Es el final del cuento? ¿Se acabó? ¡No! El perro ladró, la vaca mugió, el gallo cantó y los siete, siete niños hambrientos gritaron, ¡Tenemos un hambre atroz! atroz. Y la mamá preparó papas con arroz, papas con arroz y la tortilla corriadora corriendo por el mundo anda y dicen que todavía nadie se la ha podido comer. Qué sorpresa al final del cuento, ¿verdad? ¿Ustedes estaban pensando que la tortilla va a escapar por helicóptero? Yo tampoco. Qué sorpresa. Bueno, chicos, qué divertido este cuento que leemos hoy. Y sabes una cosa, tenemos otro librito. Pero necesitamos tener un minutito, una pausa, para preparar todo. Y vamos a continuar con otra historia de una tortilla. Nos vemos en unos minutitos. Nos vemos. Good morning. How are you guys today? It's Miss Doris otra vez. How are you? Earlier we were reading a story about a special kind of a tortilla that was actually coming to life. We're just back again and I wanted to make sure that you guys saw that book again one more time. The tortilla that came to life and ran away. At the end of that book, the tortilla escaped in a helicopter. Man, that was a surprise. Our next book about a tortilla is actually a different kind of book. It's called Round is a Tortilla. I am a person that is bilingual, so I speak both Spanish and English. And it's great because in this book you will hear both Spanish and English words. I also love this book because it talks about the family and as they are creating and cooking and making tortillas. Also, it's about one of my favorite subjects, shapes. I can't wait to share it with you. Are you ready, Buzz? All right, let's get going. The title of the book is called Round is a Tortilla. It's a book of shapes. And it's written by Roseanne Greenfield Thong. Illustrated by John Parra. Round is a Tortilla. I love this book. I know. This book was actually published by Bank Street. And um, the great part about it is the illustrations are beautiful. I can't wait for you to see. Round are sombreros. Round our sombreros. Do you see the sombreros? They are round. I see them. I see some even up here and some on the other side. I don't know if you guys saw the episode where Mr. Carrillo was dressed in his suit for mariachis, his traje de mariachis, and he had his sombrero. He had a sombrero puesto. Round are the trumpets. The trumpet right here shows a round part that blare out a tune. <gasps> Do you know what I'm noticing again? This book has some rhyming words. Let me start again. I need for you guys to listen for the rhyming words in this book. Are you ready, Paz? Round are sombreros. Round is the moon. Round are the trumpets that blare out a tune. Did you hear the words that rhymed in that part? Moon and tune. Did you hear that? Those words rhyme. They end the same. They end like un. Round are campañas. 
those are bells, campanas, that chime and ring. Round are the nests where swallows sing, ring and swing. Those words rhyme. Did you hear them? They both end with the ending sound of ing. Ring, sing, bring, ing. These are some birds that are called swallows. It's just the name of that type of bird, swallows. Round are tortillas and tacos too. Round is a pot of abuela's stew. Two and stew. Those words rhyme. They have that ending sound of ooh. Did you hear that ooh sound? Maybe when they're talking about abuela's stew, they're talking about a big pot of pozole. Do you guys like pozole? Me too. It's tasty. I can name more round things. Can you? You rhymes with stew and two. This is a rhyming book. Another thing I see is that this person right here must be abuela. Abuela must be cooking her stew. I see this little pot on the stove and the kids are watching her. And I see some tacos on the table. Because I know that I'm reading this book about shapes too, I'm always on the lookout for shapes. I become like a shape spy. Have you ever been a shape spy? I spy with my eye some shapes. I see lots of round shapes, lots of circle shapes. Do you see those circle shapes? What kinds of circle shapes do you see at your house? I wonder if you could be a shape spy at your house and go around and every time you see a circle, start counting how many circles you find in your house. Could you do that? It would definitely be um, almost like you're being a super secret spy. You should try it. Wait a minute. I'm starting to see some different shapes. I don't see so many circles. No veo tantos círculos. I see something different. I see a different shape. It looks more like a, like a square. Hmm. I wonder who this person is. Square are the letters. Look at these beautiful letters. I see the letter F and the letter A and the letter M and I and L and I and A. Did you know if I put all of those letters together again, they spell a word. Let me spell it with you and sound it out. Familia. Do you know what a familia is? It's a family, familia. Square are the letters. We know them well. Square is a board game to help us spell. This seems like a very interesting board game that maybe I have played before. Maybe it's a board game called Scrabble. I love making words. Do you like making words? We're going to have a lesson with some Scrabble letters. I can't wait to show you. This might be maybe el abuelo, maybe the grandpa with her making and playing this word game. And I see some more of the birds flying and squares all throughout this picture and square seats. What kinds of squares could you find at your house? It might be interesting to go back on your super sneaky spy hunt and find some cool squares. 
Maybe what you could do is go on a square hunt and count if you have more circles or more squares in your house. I bet you will find a lot of squares. Squares are ventanas. Ventanas. Ventanas are windows. I see a big square here, and then I see smaller squares inside the big square ventana. And I even see a beautiful girl sitting inside the ventana reading. She's reading a book that's in the shape of a square. I see some square pictures and a square clock and a square part of this guitarra like a guitar. I see some beautiful arts that are up that are in the shape of a square. Squares are ventanas that give a view. Square is my clock and my photos too. View and two. Those words rhyme. This is a rhyming book. View, two, stew, you, all those words rhyme, they end with the ooh sound. Wow, do you see all the squares in this illustration? Square is the park. Here's the square park. And the zocalo, this is like the town square, maybe like downtown. There are many of these. I've seen many of them. When I was working in Mexico, I saw so many of these. It's a very interesting place. There's a lot going on there. Square is the park and the Zocalo. Square is the fountain from long ago. Zocalo and long ago. Those words rhyme. How many square things do you know? Zocalo, long ago, do you know? Those words rhyme. Look how the author used rhyming patterns to create this book. All of those words end with O. Oh. It's interesting too because as you look at this picture, you could count how many persons you see. But really, the story is about squares, about the shapes that you see all around you. Maybe you might choose to go on a shape hunt outside. This is the first time that there's been so much outside stuff. If you're on a walk with your family or with the adults that you're with, maybe you could count how many shapes you see of different kinds, squares and circles. It's an idea. Rectangles are cards. We just switched to a new shape. We're not doing circles and we're not doing squares. We're doing rectangles. These are my favorite kind of rectangles. These are paletas. A mí me gustan mucho las paletas del sabor piña. I like pineapple paletas best. What kind of popsicle do you like best? Mmm. They all sound good. Rectangles are carts. Here's a rectangle with bells that chime. Ching, ching, ring, ring, sping, sping. And cold paletas in summertime. Chime and time. Those words rhyme. <gasps> time and chime and rhyme. They all end with that sound, I'm. Mm, very interesting. Look at the little gatita that is right there saying, ah, oh, could you give me one of those paletas, please? Stone metates inside our casa. Metates are a place that you can make some super great corn tortillas and you can grind corn. Stone matetes inside our casa help us grind our corn to masa. So you use the stone to grind the corn into its flour to make 
tortillas. They have lots of shapes that you can see in here. I see circles and squares and rectangles. Rectangles are flags that fly above the scoreboard and way up high. How many rectangles do you spy? Fly, high, spy. Listen to all those words that rhyme. They all end with that I sound. I see lots of rectangles. Lots of rectangles. Triangles are crunchy chips. We switch to a new shape. Triangles. For guacamole and other dips. I see so many triangles. I see triangles in the chips, but also triangles all around. Triangles. Triangles sail on the breeze. They line the shore and glide on seas. Breeze and seas. Look at the sea with all the ocean animals. All the triangles there. Sandias chilled in tubs of ice. That's watermelon that are in the shapes of triangles. Quesadillas by the slice. Triangles can beat the heat. What other triangles can you eat? Could you eat a quesadilla that's cut into triangles? I love quesadillas. Do you like quesadillas? Yo también. Oval is my favorite locket. A special pebble in my pocket. A new shape of ovals. You could go on an oval shape too. A shape on too. She has ovals in the shape of a necklace. There's ovals all around. Ovals is like a square, but it's squished. Squished in the center to make it sort of like a longer circle. Oval is my favorite locket. A special pebble in my pocket. I find ovals at the store. Huevos, olives, beans galore. Can you name a couple more? Store, galore. More. Those words rhyme. Stars for parties, stars for light, lining streets with colors bright. There are so many shapes wherever you go. How many more shapes do you know? Look at all the stars there. That's a different kind of shape you could look for as well. So many beautiful parts of this. Look at that little gatita. This book has been an interesting book because it says for you that you could know that you could find shapes in your house, shapes outside. But I also wanted to show you an idea of something you could do with this book. Maybe at your house you might have some special shapes that you just find and you can use them as ways to try to draw. Art is always something you could do no matter where you're at. I started an art job paper, and all I did is I just took my art circles, and I put them down. Let me grab my pencil, and I'm just going to, I just found this in my kitchen. And I just put it down anywhere that I want, and I just trace around it. I might have to um, have some help on this, but look, now I have a new, a new di different kind of a circle shape that I could just color in any color. I have different sizes of shapes that I could use. I just chose circles. Maybe this is my circle art, but you might be able to find some different squares and make it so that you're tracing those as well. I have three different sizes. I even have a very small one if I want to try to trace a small circle. And then all I need is some different coloring um, maybe markers. Maybe I want to do markers. Maybe I want to do, I don't know, colored pencils or crayons. This is a great art activity for you. I can't wait to see what kinds of art you come up with today. We've had a great time today working together. Remember our two books that we read today? We read Tortilla Corriadora That Came to Life, Running Along. And then we also had Round as a Tortilla, two great tortilla books. You know what I think we need to do? 
I think we need to all go and have some tortillas. What do you think? Maybe like we could have a corn tortilla with a little bit of chicken in it or maybe some cheese and some lettuce. I think that sounds like a taco. I love tacos, don't you? It has been great to visit with you guys today. Paz is our friend and he is glad to see you too. I wanted to remind you that we have up on the board today our special web address if you'd like to check us out. It is aps.distancelearning at gmail.com at home with APS. It's been a great day being with you guys. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you next time on At Home with APS. See you later.